Welcome back to another FPL video ahead of Bland Gaming 28. I'll be discussing how I did in Double Gaming 27 and what I'm looking to do with my two free transfers to bolster my Bland Gaming 28 squad, but also to bolster my Double Gaming 29 potential bench boost, which I've been talking about for quite some time. So if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to drop it a like. Let's try to get this to the 300. And we're also going to push on towards 20,000 subscribers and also reach 2,000 followers on Twitter and Instagram. So we're looking to reach new goals on all our social media platforms. And be sure to check the links in the description below for the discord server and fpl league as well but without further ado let's jump straight into this video while it didn't look too good after the first game of Double Gimmick 27, Raya was able to recover and produce a 9 point. He kept a clean sheet against Southampton away, a 2-0 victory there for Brentford, and in the first game he managed to get a save point and free overall, but still quite happy with David Raya and all these purchases I made on the wildcard back in Gimmick 26. These Brighton and Brentford assets were a bit frustrating at first, but ultimately came up very good in Double Gimmick 27, and David Raya was one of those. He's always got a high ceiling because of saves and bonus points, Points. In this one, he just kept a clean sheet, which was the main kind of contributor towards his big return. But a free pointer when Brentford conceded is still fairly decent and played its part too. So quite happy with David Raya. And he's actually going to be a part of a benching dilemma. The only one I'll have in Blank Gaming 28. But I'm still quite certain I'm going to stick with my ideals and also to what I originally had planned for Blank Gaming 28. But Raya is certainly in contention for a starting spot in the upcoming game week. It was points all round in my defence, starting with a Stupinian, who is one of my favourite kind of double gimmick options for 29. He could even have a double in 30 or 31, so we still are waiting for that Brighton double in the future. And the single gimmicks coming up aren't looking too great. Of course, he blanks in gimmick 28, which will be a real dilemma. And there's a lot of fear-mongering online in terms of a Stupinian's prospects of starting the first game of double gimmick 29, which, remember, is just after an international break, and there is a game for Ecuador. And then four days later, we've got Brighton returning to Premier League action but you could say the same thing about Matoma and I think there is a bit of inconsistencies there in terms of what people are arguing yes there is certainly a chance that he could be benched but I wouldn't be too pessimistic or just have that as the only reason to sell a Stupinian I think the main problem lies with having also a Brentford defender like Rico Henry Ben Mee or Pinnock and you want to keep them for gimmick 28 where you know they're going to feature they could even haul whilst Stupinian is going to blank that is going to be the real dilemma when you add on top of it maybe some concerns about him starting the first game of Gimmick 29, then it does make a little bit of sense. But still, I would like to keep Estupinian ideally. And on a wild card in Gimmick 28, be sure to check out that video. I still feature Estupinian in there. You bench him in Gimmick 28, start him in 29, or even bench boost in that game week. And you ultimately can have him for the upcoming double in the future as well. So I still like Estupinian a lot. He got two bonus points in the second game. And arguably, he should have had all three. He was fantastic in that match against Crystal Palace. And he's a really good FPL option. If you look at the last seven, eight game weeks, so many different kind of revenues or avenues, should I say, of points. You know, you look at the assists, the bonus points, also some clean sheets along the way. So I'm a really big fan of Estupinian in FPR at the moment. He's looking really, really promising. So despite a really shaky start of one point against Leeds, he more than made up for it in the second game of double gaming 27. And then looking at the rest of my defense, Ben Mee also came up clutch you could say with a nine pointer also some bonus points and Brentford looked very solid there against Southampton Southampton were very flat but Brentford did their job a great away performance and if you look over the course of the season Brentford haven't been that great on their travels it's at home where they get the majority of their points and wins but they managed to keep the clean sheet get the victory and Ben Mee was a big part of that so happy with that return I've got a conundrum in game 28 as well and Trippier was the final defender he made a mistake which almost allowed Walls back into the game. It was the equaliser by Huang He Chan, but he also got the assist for the first goal. And Trippi is a great FPL option. I'm happy to keep him, but there certainly has been a dropper for Newcastle. Not only in terms of their Premier League results and getting enough victories on the board since the World Cup, but also the FPL prospects and the likes of Trippier, who have been fantastic all season, have definitely halted a little bit and haven't been as promising. Two midfielders carried my midfield this week, starting with Matoma with a 12-pointer, an assist in each game. I can't complain too much. And when you look at all the captaincy options, the major ones in Gimmick 27, Matoma, March, McAllister, Ivan Tony, 
pretty much there's a point separating each one of those players. So very happy with whoever you picked. If you picked one of those four, you should be happy. It was a good return, a good decision as well. And I'll be talking about who I captain at the end when I show my points before moving on to my transfer plans for Blank Gaming 28. But Matoma, very happy with him. It could have been more, but still, I'll take the 12 points from such a cheap asset. The same goes for Solly March, but let's be real. He should have had that goal awarded. I know the rules are very clear and after an hour's passed since the game is finished they can't make changes to points but they originally awarded the goal to Solly March then they took it away and then all these stat sites like Opta awarded the goal finally and officially and conclusively to Solly March and that goal that wasn't awarded against Leeds that would have been a swing of potentially seven points five for a goal and also two for bonus points so it was a massive swing there but 11 points is still a solid return I just think that those that captain March are very unlucky you should have had a mega haul we're talking about 18 points around that mark but still 11 points is good and he scored on the 15th minute against crystal palace on the 15th of march you can't ride that stuff so you've got to be very happy with that the other two midfielders though include marcus rashford with a free pointer man united went down to 10 men very early on in that game and that changed the complexion of the match but rashford is still a great option to keep easily benchable in gaming 28 and he's probably the best captain you could argue in gaming 29 but let's see how man united do once again without casemiro over the next four games games including free in the Premier League I think Rashford will continue to do well and Man United will continue to get points on the board but they have struggled in recent games and they haven't scored a single goal in the month of March so far obviously they lost heavily to Liverpool and drew to Southampton at home but I'm expecting them to come back and also produce a big result and performance like they did against Betis in the Europa League in the first leg let's see how they do in the second as well the final midfielder was Saka my main gripe is the fact that I had three Arsenal players and I managed to start the one with the least amount of points but still he probably had his worst performance in recent months and arguably across the whole season but it was still a six out of ten and he was relatively involved and kind of playing his own part as Saka continuously does and look he's such a consistent player one off game is allowed and it's just a bit frustrating from an FPL perspective not getting that right in terms of the Arsenal assets but Saka is a great option going forward and I'd still pick him on the wild card. I think in last week's video, I was talking about my front three not delivering as consistently as I would like. This week was completely different though. Harry Kane with a 13-pointer, a brace against Nottingham Forest and a really good performance by him all round. He scored the penalty too and Spurs won quite comprehensively in the end. I was backing Spurs to score two or three against Forest. They did and if that was the case, Kane was always going to be heavily involved or in most cases he would be anyway and that's what happened and Harry Kane remains one of the best options in the game even without the double game weeks and all of that and actually over the next two, I would argue I might even prefer him over Mohamed Salah both of them have two fixtures but Harry Kane does really well home and away when you look at Salah and Liverpool they do struggle a lot on their travels and of course Salah is still a great option and it's definitely a debate right now between Salah and Kane as the second best premium in FPL but right now it's just kind of ebbs and flows one way or the other and Harry Kane has just been consistent from the start of the season so happy to have him and the next forward another one with 13 points was Ivan Tony. I was actually a bit frustrated about this and you'll probably understand why because he got an assist in the 97th minute and he actually picked up a yellow card into extra time but any kind of return for Ivan Tony would have been detrimental to anyone who still owned him but didn't captain him and I was one of those people and it was close for me in terms of all the captaincy options I think there wasn't really much to separate all of them but Ivan Tony definitely came into a league of his own and despite the fact that March, Matum and all these other kind of Brighton assets led Ivan Tony up until pretty much the last few minutes of the Southampton game it was Ivan Tony who ended up outscoring all of them but still wasn't able to outscore the likes of Harry Kane a single game option and this does show you that whilst double game choices like you know Estupinian, Matoma, March, Ivan Tony are definitely worth purchasing or considering when there's a double game coming up you still have these single game options like Harry Kane that can still produce a mega haul and you have to be careful sometimes when you sell these single game for the double gimmick options but look it's a difficult balance to strike you're not always going to get it right sometimes you're, you're going to be damned if you do and you're damned if you don't if you catch my drift so it's very difficult to strike that balance and get every single decision right you're ultimately going to come up short in certain areas but the final forward and this is another one where it doesn't really make a difference it was Erling Haaland and his effective ownership was actually not too bad as it usually is but a six-pointer scored a penalty a bit 
kind of underwhelming. Besides that, he missed some chances too. And Man City might have even drawn that game if it wasn't for the penalty that Elise conceded. But there you go. A really good showing by everyone in my team, with the exception of Rashford and Saka. When those two are your worst players in your starting eleven, you know you've done something pretty well this week. There won't be many weeks where my FPL and UCL fantasy scores are identical and especially when both of those fantasy formats involve an 100 plus point haul but that's what happened this week and it won't happen too often I'm going to enjoy it uh, as we'll talk about UCL fantasy though I don't think that mega haul in UCL fantasy was enough to prevent a red arrow but in this case I actually pretty much halved my rank so I was around 138k I ended up in 78k after all the games were concluded 105 points and I've now got 1754 overall you can see the league code there as well there's also a link in the description you could probably tell by how I was talking in the forward section that I didn't captain Ivan Tony and that I captain a Brighton midfielder like Matoma that's what happened only a one point difference between Matoma and Tony either way so I wouldn't have bragged if I went for Tony and I also won't brag or even you know be too salty if I go the other way good returns by all of them and I think every one kind of nailed down the captaincy pretty well and at least these double gimmick options return because I think the gimmick 26 slash 27 wildcarders needed this especially after the Liverpool players you know absolutely devastated our ranks at one point in gimmick 26 or at least prevented us from reaching absolutely new heights but there you go these things are going to go like this the season's going to oscillate one way and the other and it has been a while since I got a green arrow, a lot of red arrows in recent weeks. And despite a real consistency between gimmick 17 and 23 slash 24, it has been downhill since then. And I haven't been able to creep into the top 50k and beyond. But that's my hope now, heading into blank gimmick 28 and double gimmick 29, where I'm looking to use the bench boost, save the free hit for later in the season. And those are the only two chips that I have left. I've used the wild card and triple captaincy. So those two chips will be very crucial. And I think my gimmick 29 bench boost should easily outscore what I had this week where I had Kepa Rizabalaga with a three pointer, Botman with a two pointer, Sinchenko with six and also Odegaard with seven I believe. So I think I can easily outscore that in 29. Let's see how that pans out but if I can get these transfers just right in gimmick 28 and set my team up optimally for gimmick 29 I have a really good feeling I can finally break into the top 50k and maybe push even beyond that to a really solid rank but now let's talk about my transfer plans for blank gimmick 28 I'm pretty settled on one transfer but my second move if I decide to pull through of it it's going to be between two players and two different positions and that will pretty much completely change my outlook in terms of gimmicks 28 and 29. Despite Raya outscoring Kepa Zabalaga by six points, the extra game obviously played a huge part and I have more confidence in Chelsea at the moment and Kepa Zabalaga in getting these hauls. And I also look at the fixtures, Everton at home, does look a bit easier than Leicester at home from a defensive perspective. I believe Chelsea and Brentford will win, but I also wouldn't be surprised if Leicester managed to nick a goal, whilst with Chelsea, I actually back them to keep the clean sheet quite strongly. And when I look at all the teams, including Arsenal this week, I would argue Chelsea have the best chance of keeping a clean sheet in Gaming 28. Let me know if you disagree, of course, because you do have Newcastle away to Nottingham Forest, Arsenal at home to Crystal Palace, who have been struggling this year, no wins in 2023, and they also have Patrick Vieira are on the verge of being sacked and they haven't scored a goal in the last four Premier League games as well but I would go for Kepa Zabalaga this week even on the free hit potentially and also on the wild card he makes for a great option this won't be the best looking defence you'll see and I've got Sinchenko at home to Crystal Palace that looks really good on paper but Arsenal don't keep too many clean sheets at the Emirates it's mainly on their travels where they keep the bulk of those clean sheets and they manage to look more solid defensively at home I think they're just a bit more offensive minded so they score a lot of goals but also leak in a lot I think on their travels they also maybe are looking to control games a little bit more slow it down at times but it kind of goes both ways and it's not always the case Arsenal are a difficult team to predict and they are a difficult team to start games against they can definitely start games very quickly and also pressure the opponents into mistakes but with Sinchenko I'm not expecting much actually despite this fixture and Crystal Palace's struggles but still the fixture is there and if Arsenal can finally keep some clean sheets at home that will be crucial in the title race and also for those of us that have these Arsenal assets Sinchenko could actually make way in gimmick 29 but I'm going to keep him in gimmick 28 it doesn't make sense to sell him just yet and now you've got a double up in Newcastle defensively starting with Trippier away to Nottingham Forest and and I'm still happy with him, but I actually wouldn't be surprised if Forrest were able to nick a goal and maybe 
maybe even get a draw in this game. So a nil-nil or a 1-1 is probably a likely scenario. And ideally, in my case, I would be opting for a nil-nil because it would mean points for Trippier and Sven Botman. And that would give me a huge, well, maybe not huge, but a significant rank rise. I'm not so sure if that many people will have a double up in Newcastle defensively. Maybe those on the wildcard do. But I was seeing a lot of people kind of hesitant on doing so. And it does make sense because in recent weeks, they're not getting the results. They're not getting clean sheets and FPL points. But I'm really hoping for that this week. And I think Botman and Trippier can deliver something. But it won't be easy against Forrest, who are actually pretty good in home matches. The final defender is Ben Mee, who did very well for me in Double Gaming 27. I'm hoping for a decent return as well against Leicester, but it does depend because one of my transfers could involve a Leicester attacker and there could be a conflict of interest there. But as I'll show you very briefly in FPL.team later in this video, I'll also show you an alternative plan where I don't go for that Leicester attacker and then I'll be fully banking and hoping for that clean sheet for Brentford. There aren't many standout midfielders in Game Week 28, but Odegaard is one of them. The same goes for the Arsenal midfielders like Trossard, Martinelli and Saka. Apart from those, you can make a case for Rodrigo or Harrison, but I'd really mainly point towards the likes of James Madison and Miguel Almiron. I'm not a big fan of most of these midfielders. I think the best ones, apart from the Arsenal assets, include Marcus Rashford, Mohamed Salah, a Man City midfielder like De Bruyne, and also Mitoma, but they all blank in Game Week 28, of course. So to strike that balance of covering Game Week 28 and 20, 29, you either need to free hit in 28 or get these players from Arsenal, maybe Madison or Almiron in time for this blank game week. But it isn't easy and it's not ideal. And I don't think it will be a high scoring week in terms of midfielders. But Odegaard is certainly one of the best ones. He has a high ceiling. He scored against Fulham, just coming back from an illness. And he put in a really good performance there. And I'd back him to do well against Palace and or leads. It just depends because sometimes he can perform well and not get the FPL points. But this season, he's a completely different beast when it comes to FPL. In seasons gone by, I never would have considered him in this game. But now it's a completely different story. Arsenal are a better team as well, which does play a part too. But the next midfielder is Bakao Saka, who's been a bit underwhelming. He blanked against Bournemouth when a lot of us captain him. And he also was the probably the worst Arsenal asset in terms of gaming 27. And the likes of Gabriel, Sinchenko, Martinelli, who we all benched outscored Saka with ease but he's still a great option and I would back him to do well in the next two games and actually in my case which I've covered in previous team selection videos and streams as well it will be one of Saka or Odegaard making way and depending on who I sell it could be either Salah or Bruno Fernandes coming in for me in double gaming 29 but I'll talk more about that as we get closer to that deadline but Bakayo Saka is a great option nonetheless we can't forget that the other midfielder that I could bring in is James Madison coming in for Solly March but there will be a conflict between Ben Mee and Madison. I've also got Raya on the bench, who I could start as well. But I think I'm just going to go for Ben Mee. And then it's just a question for me whether I get in Madison in midfield or make a defender transfer, which I'll show you very soon in FPL.team. But this will be a pretty solid midfield, all things considered. And on the free here, I'd probably go for the same midfield free, although you can make a case for Martinelli, Trossard and Almiron. After a 13-pointer in Game Week 27, Harry Kane obviously remains in this team and is one of the leading captaincy options away to Southampton, who he has a good record against a few years ago. Spurs absolutely demolished Southampton at St. Mary's with Hume Ming Son and Harry Kane combining very well. On a free hit, you could consider even the likes of Hume Ming Son as a one-week punt, but I wouldn't buy him for the long term. And if you want any Spurs asset at all, you know my answer. It's been the same all season. It's Harry Kane or nothing. You could even add a Spurs defender as well. I'm not too sure about Pedro Porro because he's starting games right now with Emerson Real injured but that could easily change once the Brazilian returns. Ben Davis is probably the second best Spurs asset right now which sounds completely crazy. Then you've got Forster as a decent benchable option in goal but then you've got Steele, you've got Raya, Kepereza, Balaga who are all quite cheap as well and they are probably going to be better assets in the long term too but yeah, really with Spurs, it's Harry Kane or nothing for me. And if you want that second, it's probably Ben Davis at this moment in time. Harry Kane against Southampton, I will back him to do well there. Then I've got Ivan Tony, another one who scored 13 points for me in double gaming 27. At home to Leicester, this could be another huge haul. 
and he certainly should be a consideration for the captaincy. The same goes for Arsenal midfielders, Harry Kane, and maybe a defender like Ben Chilwell. I don't think I'd go to other players like Sinchenko or Madison this week, but those would be the main captaincy options alongside a potential new signing for me, which is Oli Watkins, who would be coming in for Erling Haaland, despite the fact that the Norwegian scored five goals against Leipzig in the Champions League. We'll talk about what happened there in UCL Fantasy, of course, in those videos. But Oli Watkins at home to Bournemouth, it's a good fix and Aston Villa actually lost this game in the reverse one but different managers different circumstances and Aston Villa are looking much better under Unai Emery at least from an offensive perspective and Oli Watkins has been very consistent since the Spaniards arrival so this would be a very good front three the very best that you can assemble in game week 28 but I think a few of you will argue the likes of Ian Acho and Kai Havertz definitely need to be considered the same goes for Joao Felix too but let's go to FPL.team now and show you a alternative transfer plan which also involves Watkins but the second transfer will not be Madison. Before I do that though because I love to get ahead of myself sometimes let's talk about the captaincy and the bench. So as you can see here it'd be Raya, Estupinian, Mitoma and Rashford on my bench and they would all come back in in 29 which I'm going to bench boost anyway so it doesn't make a, too much of a difference in that regard and really all that needs to be said now is the captaincy and I would personally favor Harry Kane at the moment and Saka is the vice but I have a feeling I might change the vice captaincy onto somebody else and maybe consider captaining that player instead. So I don't think the captaincy is sealed by any stretch of the imagination and Southampton looked very flat against Brentford if they put in that performance against Spurs I'd be very confident of a return for Harry Kane and potentially for Hyun Ming Son too and the only player apart from those in my team that I'd consider captaining would be Ben Chilwell and speaking of the devil he could be another one that I'm looking to buy in for Game Week 28. If I were to buy the Chelsea fullback this week, I would go for a back five and also a midfield two. I don't think I've ever done this formation 5-2-3 because midfielders are so valuable and they are the main source of points on most occasions anyway. But it would be Kepa Zablaga in goal. I'd have Ben Mee, Trippier, Botman and Sinchenko. But it would be Chilwell completing the back five. I'd go for two Arsenal midfielders in Saka and Odegaard and then the usual front three, Oli Watkins, Harry Kane and Ivan Tony. And I have 7.1 million left in the bank that gives me plenty to play with you could say plenty of flexibility to bring in the likes of Bruno Fernandes or Salah in 29 and also bring back Erling Haaland in Gemic 30 I have discussed my transfer plans in other videos too so that's all kind of laid out and it is flexible I'm open-minded about certain things and it's not set in stone but I've got a good idea of the one or two players I can get in each position should I need to make a transfer or should I decide I want to now ideally I would keep a Stupinian but if I want to get in better Ben Chilwell. I don't see the need or the reason to get rid of Sinchenko right now when he's got a much better chance of, you know, getting a good return than Estupinian, who quite frankly blanks. So it just makes sense. And the same goes for Ben Mee too. Now, I think Leicester could score in that game, but I am backing Brentford to win. And even Ben Mee could score a goal. I would not rule that out completely. Leicester struggle from set pieces. Ben Mee is a real target from those corners and free kicks. And I think Brentford could really exploit that weakness from Leicester, which has been the case for maybe several years now under Brendan Rodgers and Ben Mee I mean if I sell him I could easily see myself regretting it so if I were to sell a defender for Ben Chilwell it would be a Stupinian let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below would you bring in Chilwell for a Stupinian or would you bring in Madison for Solly March and also there is the possibility of just using one free transfer rolling the other one and then not taking a hit in gaming 29 that's another possibility the only downside is that i would have 10 men in blank gaming 28 but that might not be too big of an issue now if i look at it logically i think chilwell will outscore madison in gaming 28 but i also think estupinian is someone that will get a good score in 29 and if i want to bring him back in it could involve a hit so there's a lot of things to weigh up and nothing is set in stone let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below what are you going to be doing for double gaming 29 and blank gaming 28 and thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to over 300 likes let's keep on pushing towards 20,000 subscribers and beyond you can follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and check the links in the description below for the patron channel memberships discord server fpl league and so rare be sure to sign up for that fantasy game using my link there and i'll also put it in the comment section down below i wish you all the best of luck for blank gaming 28 and the rest of the season and i'll see you next time